Well, on this episode of FWA TV, we are going to see the first ever 15 man over the top elimination battle royal to crown a new number one contender to the FWA British Heavyweight Championship title. I am, of course, talking about the man himself, the show stealer Alex Shane. Keep it here on FWA TV for FWA Gold Rush. Ladies and gentlemen, the big news on FWA TV this week is this. Due to a relapse of cystic fibrosis, the Butler Simmons, one half of the FWA Tag Team Champions, is unable to compete in FWA's Gold Rush. We'll bring you more on that next week. However, for this week, due to Simmons not being able to compete in Gold Rush, the returning wonder kid, Johnny Storm, has now been entered into Gold Rush. If you put Johnny Storm's name in with the other 14 contestants, this is going to be one wild match that you will not want to miss. Let's take a look at the entrance in FWA's Gold Rush. The number one contender to the All England Championship, Spud. Former title contender to the FWA British Heavyweight Championship, James Ty. A member of Alex Shane's security detail, Styx. One half of the FWA Tag Team Champions, the Duke of Danger. The former British Heavyweight Champion, the Anarchist, Doug Williams. A man who holds two victories over the now FWA British Heavyweight Champion, Aviv Mayan. A former FWA Tag Team Champion with the show stealer himself, the Shining Light, Stevie Knight. Alex Shane's security member, Martin Stone. Former student of the show stealer Alex Shane, Ross Jordan. Alex Shane's security member, Leroy Kincaid. The man who pushed Alex Shane to the limit, Jack Xavier. The man whom Alex Shane beat for his first heavyweight title in the FWA, the specialist, Mark Sloan. Alex Shane's protege and the All England Champion, the South City Thriller, Hay Benson. The man with possibly the biggest score to settle of them all, former best friend, former tag team partner, the returning Ulf Herman. And quite possibly the biggest wild card in the match, the returning Johnny Storm, a man who started his career around the same time as Alex around 10 years ago. After reading that list of names, it's obvious for me to see that everyone entered into Gold Rush seems to have a link to the FWA British Heavyweight Champion to show stealer Alex Shane. However, what's more interesting to see is the fact that each man entered into Gold Rush seems to be linked to each other. To find out how all these men's paths are intertwined, keep here on FWA TV where we count down to Gold Rush. Ladies and gentlemen, we are just 24 hours away from the first ever FWA TV taping of 2005. It happens at the Broxbourne Civic Hall when FWA presents New Frontiers. This is how the matches look so far. The returning Zebra Kid takes on US strong style sensation Chris Hero. We'll see a tag team grudge match when we see the team of James Ty and Mark Belton take on the Little Dragon Ross Jordan and Aviv Mayan. The 
The FWA British Tag Team Champions Hampton Court make their first title defence of 2005 when they take on the new team of the Manchester Massive, Declan O'Connor and Joey Hayes. The FWA All England Champion, the South City Thriller, Hay Vanson, goes one on one against the number one contender, Spud. The FWA holds its first ever Open Door Invitational where we take 10 of the best unsigned wrestlers in the UK and put them to a live public vote where two of them will be chosen to make their FWA debut that very night. And in the main event we'll see the FWA British Heavyweight Champion, the show stealer Alex Shane put that title on the line against the man who wins Gold Rush tonight. Tickets are available by calling the Broxbourne Civic Hall hotline or alternatively by going to www.frontierwrestling.com. New Frontiers 2005, do not miss it. And now, this week's Frontier Focus. Now of course the main aim of Gold Rush is to go on and become the number one contender to the show stealer Alex Shane's British Heavyweight Championship which will take place in a match on February 26th at the Broxbourne Civic Hall when FWA presents New Frontiers. It's also a time though where we could see scores settled, rivalries come to a head and new feuds be born. Let's take a look now and see how all these men's paths are intertwined. Nick into this match, Jack Xavier has a ton of momentum as we see Hay Vanson using the, the, the lighting rig there, getting up on the shoulders of Jack Xavier and taking him over in a hurricane runner. It, it would have been lights out for Jack Xavier as Jack Xavier with a standing moonsault from the stage, landing the All England champion down is down. Until Jack Xavier was taken to the limit by the show stealer Alex Shane, that he finally found his fire. Alex Shane thought he was making an example out of him, but unfortunately, it drove Jack harder and harder, and that road may lead him to the All England title here tonight at the Coventry Sky Dome. Hey, Vance knows what he needs to do now. I think he's seen retain. an opportunity. What's he going to do? Is this going to be a top rope superplex, maybe? He, he's setting him up for something, Tony. Hey Vanson is going to capitalize on Jack Xavier's mistake, and the mistake was not putting Hey Vanson away quick enough. That guardrail is oh still God. laid out in the ring. Ow, Nick! Bloody Jack Xavier will get his first opportunity to get back into an FWA ring with the man that he has feuded with throughout the last six months in the FWA. I am of course talking about the FWA All England Champion, the South City Thriller, Hay Vanson. But Hay Vanson's gonna be happy looking behind his back because the number one contender to the very title he holds, Spud, is gonna be in the ring with him at the same time too. Aviv now. Oh, wait a minute. Aviv Mayan with the Aviv Las Vegas hits it. But, but surely you should be capitalizing. Spud, Spud with the blood, that's a Phoenix star Spud. Two, three, yes, Spud! I never thought I'd say this, but Spud is the new number one contender to the All England Championship! But let's not forget, Spud's also going to be in the ring with the two men he beat in that next generation three-way dance of British Uprising 3. I'm, of course, talking about Aviv Mayan and Ross Jordan. But those three men are also going to be in the ring at the same time with a man who seems to have a problem with all three of them. I'm, of course, talking about James Tyne.
if that's not bad enough for James Ty, the man whom he forced to leave the FWA in a loser leaves town match is back in the FWA and he's after his blood. I'm talking about the wonder kid, Johnny Storm. <laughs> Now without James Ty's tag team partner Mark Belton being entered into Gold Rush, it looks as though James Ty is going to be looking to form an alliance. And who better to form an alliance with than the man that trained him in the first place, the specialist Mark Sloan. But let's not forget Mark Sloan is also going to have his hands full when he's back in the ring with one of the men that he challenged at British Uprising 3 for the FWA tag team titles, the Duke of Dana. But saying this, the specialist does have an advantage because his tag team partner, the Shining Knight Stevie Knight, is also going to be entered into Gold Rush. But the question is, how cohesive are they as a unit? I mean, we all saw Stevie Knight leave ringside at British Uprising 3. And let's not forget, in Gold Rush, it's every man for himself. ...themselves. She probably ought to be made to stay in the back so she can just prepare some Earl Grey for later. It would appear, Nick, that, um... That, um... She's trying to tempt him with her feminine wiles, but, um, Tony. Buttercup. It's not very Christian now, is it? Um. Tony, wake up. Oh, sorry, Nick. Tony. Buttercup there, it, it would appear to, uh, it would appear as though she's coaxed. I she's, guess would she's be the coaxing. way. She's coaxing. She's coaxing Stevie Knight uh, away from the ringside area. Ste Nick, Stevie Knight's gone. Simmons is in the ring with Mark Slow. Butler, Butler. Bless. In the center of the ring, two and a three! It's all over! Having said that though, if it is every man for himself, how are the members of Alex Shane's security detail going to function in Gold Rush? You've got Styx, you've got Martin Stone, you've got Leo Rick and Kate. Are they simply in Gold Rush to take out any threat to the show stealers heavyweight title? Or if one of them wins, are they going to go on and face the FWA British heavyweight champion? But before they can even think about that, they've got two very big issues to contend with. FWA British Heavyweight Champion, the Anarchist Doug Williams. We all saw what happened three weeks ago in that tag team war. But at the moment, it seems as though Herman and Williams can't seem to stay on the same page at the same time, with Williams still blaming Herman for costing him the FWA British Heavyweight Championship back at British Uprising 3. And all Herman just seems to be determined at getting his hands on the newly crowned FWA Heavyweight Champion. Could tonight be the night that these two men come to blows? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, just before we head into Gold Rush, I've got some big news for you. The Phoenix, Jody Fleisch, has requested that he can make an appearance at FWA's New Frontiers, where he will make an announcement regarding his future. I'm not sure what it's going to be. The only way to find out is to be there live and in person. The Broxbourne Civic Hall for FWA's New Frontiers. For ticket information, head on over to www.frontierwrestling.com. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the Gold Rush! The Gold Rush is a 15-man battle royal with a difference. Earlier today, 15 FWA wrestlers took part in a random drawing each picking a number between 1 and 15. The rest 
Street Crew numbers one and two will begin the match. Then, every 60 seconds, another wrestler will enter the ring in accordance with the number they drew until all 15 men have entered the match. A wrestler is eliminated from the gold rush when they are thrown over the top rope and both feet hit the floor. The last man remaining in the ring will be the winner of the gold rush and will be declared the new number one contender to the FWA British Heavyweight Championship. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, in the gold rush, it is every man for himself. And now the wrestler who drew number one. Aviv Mayan has drew number one, and therefore he has to go the longest distance if he wants to get that heavyweight title shot against the show stealer Alex Shane. Let's keep in mind that the last time we saw Mayan, James Ty beat him within an inch of his life. Is he ready for this contest? A very good point there. Aviv Mayan was beaten within. In fact, it was less than that. It was, he was actually not spud, out. Spud! Holy Spud! It's Spud! It's, Look at him! It's definitely Spud, all right, from Spudleyville. And this is this is great now. We're going to see a, a great, great half-line match here, I believe, in the early first couple of minutes of this Gold Rush Battle Royal. Let's keep in mind that these two men recently met at that Next Generation Freeway in the Coventry Sky Dome. That's right. And it was Spud who managed to um, get the pinfall over Ross Jordan. I mean, taking advantage of a beat my hand's injury, Spud is the number one contender to the All England title and can become the first man to become a double contender for both All England and British heavyweight. That's right. You know what? I don't think either of us will be able to talk as fast as these guys are hitting moves here. Uh, tilt well, head scissors there from Spud. Aviv Mayan drops, drops there. The Insiguri knocks down Aviv Mayan here. This is fast, this is furious. And Spud now sending Aviv into the turnbuckle. I dare say, oh, and immediately trying to get Aviv out of the match. He knows that he's gonna, he needs as much rest as possible. He's number two entry, just like Aviv is number one. They need as much rest. If he gets him out now, he'll have a few seconds rest before the number three entry makes his way to the ring. Now Aviv Mayan trying to get Spud out. Well, you know what? I've known Spud before he started his career in the FWA. You don't ever want to underestimate him because he'll cause an upset and become a number one contender. And now, here's the countdown. The countdown. Three, two, who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? This could change the tide of the match. Oh, oh, this is fascinating. I know that. It's the little dragon, Ross Jordan. And you know oh, what this means? It's a rematch It's a rematch from the next generation three-way dance of British Uprising 3. Hey, Ross Jordan was pinned in that match, and you've got to believe. Oh, oh bro, they're both taking I the guess, spud. spud. Well, Spud was the victor of the, of the match, you know. Obviously, these guys aren't happy about that, but now Ross Jordan taking down Aviv Mayan now. Oh, reversal, Dr down reverse DDT. There's Spud with a vicious super kick there right underneath the chin. You know what, it was incredibly accurate. He's not the strongest guy in the roster, but he's quick and he strikes right lightning. And Spud now trying to get Ross Jordan out of the rumble, but the number one contender to the All England title has been cut oh off by Aviv oh Mayan. Oh dear, Spud has got the, the biggest obstacle as far as lifting people up because everybody is bigger than him. He is the lighter of, the, of everyone actually in this match. There's the countdown. There's the counter. It's hard to believe it's gone so fast already. And now Ross Jordan on the top rope, interior by Aviv Mayan. And number four out of all 15, it's James Ty. Oh, I, oh wait a minute. Oh. Ty is a dead man. He has got big issues with all three people in this ring. Yeah, and all three of them again. Ty is getting his just desserts. Ty is getting what he's had coming to him. He is berated. He has degraded all three of the men he is in the ring with there about them not being worthy enough to be even classed next generation FWA competitors. Now all three taking out their aggression on James Tyne. Here comes Spud. 
Oh! oh! Just raking him across the face! He nearly took his face off! Oh, this is meant to be every there. man for all, himself! All three of them... The triple teaming him! All, all three of them ganging up as a measure of revenge on James Ty now. All three, there's Aviv with the legs. Oh, a double thumb to the eye there, and he kicks Aviv off. That's where the strength comes into play. Oh, James Ty, Aviv soon back, Aviv is mad, Aviv remembers, how can he forget what happened to him the last time the two met, and it wasn't actually in the ring, it was backstage after their match. We count down here, here comes the fifth entrance. The specialist, Mark Sloan, and he's coming out with the entourage. Oh, he barged through the entourage, he wants to get in, and he's attacking. He's attacking Aviv oh. Mayan. He's teaming up with James Ty, his star prodigy, his star pupil. From the past, they've got history. They've got all their double team maneuvers still in the bag. Exactly. The German suplex super kick. And here comes the. Oh, no, what is. Oh, oh, my lord, a reverse ace crusher with the power bump. And Mark Onto Sloan. The knee. Mark Sloan was the saving grace for James Ty, and now Ty, he's gonna make Spud pay. What is, oh, this is unbelievable. The, the tag team work we're seeing here from James Ty and, and the guy who trained him, the specialist, Mark Sloan. Tomorrow oh. Driver, Tomorrow Driver, and Spud, his head has just crumpled. The neck of Spud is in serious trouble, and there's a, there's like a razor's edge splash mountain powerbomb there. And this is showing why Mark Sloan and James Ty were at one point considered the greatest tag team who never held the tag titles. Coming out next though, Stevie Knight. Stevie Knight, Mark Sloan's current tag team champion. They were unsuccessful in getting the FWA tag team titles off of the team of Simmons and the Duke of Danger. But no doubt this will not play well for Spud, Ross Jordan and Aviv Mayan. A knight going straight for Spud. He's going straight on the injured Spud. And it doesn't surprise me that a cagey ring veteran like Stevie Knight would go for the injured man. He's now choking Spud against that ropes. He was the number sixth entrant into this gold rush battle royal uh, and now James Ty now he is too is focusing his attention on Spud well absolutely I mean Spud I mean he's just he is the smallest professional competitor in this country and as a result everyone is gunning for him absolutely there like Sloan choking Aviv my out there Aviv Mayan, uh, he's trying to lift him out of the ring. You know, Mark Sloan trained Aviv Mayan, and it looks like he's trying to teach him one more lesson in the FWA ring. Oh, drop salt from Ty. The countdown hits. Absolutely, now. The count one. Who's it going to be? Number the seven. Duke of the Danger. Duke of that, the unmistakable sound of the Duke of Danger. And there's Buttercup. Oh, she is a wench and a half. But Duke of Danger rushing straight in there and taking it to Stevie Knight. Duke of Danger was successful in defending the tag team titles against Knight and the specialist Mark And Sloan. he went straight for Stevie Knight. Of course, they have history there. And now we see Ross Jordan and Spud now battling it out. Spud once again teetering on the edge of being eliminated. And, and Mark Sloan there to help proceedings along. James Ty now. Thumping on a V-Man. We're going to see these two fight a lot, I feel. Oh, and Spud just took a vicious boot from the specialist. As, as the Duke of Danger choking out Stevie Knight. I still got a feeling that he's not exactly forgiven Stevie Knight for what he did to Buttercup at Uprising. Courtesy of that intriguing stink face that he enjoyed just that little bit too much. What are you talking about? It was Buttercup that cost him the tag title match when Buttercup used her feminine wiles to lure Knight to the back. And a what a fibber. Anyway, Countdown's coming back down again. This is exciting. So you don't know who it's going to be so far. It's been very intriguing the way that the way the draw has actually come out. Oh, it is, it's, I can hear the music, and there he is, ladies oh, and gentlemen. I wondered what was taking so long, and it's a man who, it's Hade Vance.
Anderson. He's already been he's already been brutalized recently by Loki, and you can see. Look at the chest of Hay Vanson. He's still got the marks across him, like a badge of honor. He will walk to the ring. Oh. But let's point out, this is the FWA All England champion, and the current number one contender to his title is in the ring. That's right, it's Spud. That's right, Spud. And Hay Vanson, he's in no rush to get in the ring. And, and I suppose, in his opinion, why should he? Oh, oh and he look goes who he's straight gone for, for his future contender. He wants to send a message to Spud to Taking let him know him that he's not going to take the FWA silver from around his waist. That's right now, he Irish whips Spud off the ropes. Spud drops the clown. Whoa! Oh, what the? Whoa! Oh, come on! Yes! Oh, no, the fans go. The, hey. and the fans have jumped to their feet, Nick London. This is great. The first elimination of the match was also the last entrant into the match. Hey, Vanson, and the man who eliminated him will be his next challenger, and that's Spud. What a message to send! But oh my God, God, run for the hills! Everyone, Everyone just run! Everyone is going to die. It's the entrance of the big F and German Ulf Herman, and look at everybody's looks. And Mark Sloan sends Spud. And a V my and a double choke slam now. Ross Jordan runs in Alf Herman. And there Jordan goes Ross Jordan. has been eliminated. Duke there goes Danger. the Duke. Two. Start counting, start the body count. Mark Sloan, with all his love for this business, is uh, not Sloan, enough. run, Sloan, run, run, Sloan. Whoa! He did run. He ran out of the ring courtesy of Stevie Knight, his tag team partner. Oh, Knight thinks that was clever, but now he's in there on his own without a tag team partner oh, to he... go against Ulf Herman. What is he thinking? Well, what Knight... is he thinking? Knight has just eliminated himself. <laughs> He knew what was best for him. He knew what was best for him. Oh, oh Spud is. Bye bye, Spud. Hey, I, oh my about god, to one handed. Potatoes with Spud right oh, about no. now. Oh, Spud has they been him. eliminated. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Him. They caught him and. They, oh, come on. They put him back on the ring. What do we. What they. Why, why would the entourage put Spud back on the ring? Spud survived oh, the same time, time with a sly, sly elimination whoa, 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 whoa. there. Why here yeah, from behind? Not, not like I'm surprised from James Toy. But why, why would they all put Spud back on the ring? Why would the entourage do so? As we see the entrance of the big Martin Stone, the human breeze block. Martin Stone, Martin a member Stone. of Alex Shane's security detail, okay. and as such, he told me before the rumble, he told me that he's going in there, he's going to take it to Ulf Herman. His job um, is to ensure um, that Ulf Herman and Doug the Anarchist Williams, for that matter, do not win the gold this rush. This is not a safe working environment for anyone who is a part of Alex Shane's security team. When Ulf Herman is in the ring, you are in trouble. You're especially in trouble if your name is Martin Stone. Everyone else is lying on their back, and you happen to be a member of the security that, is, that Ulf Herman is trying to get to. You're trying to protect the man that Ulf Herman wants to destroy. And there's James Ty from behind. I'm noticing a consistent pattern here from James Ty. He won't face you face to face. Got your back to him. Oh, yeah, he's there. Real, real strong man, James Ty. Real hey. brave man. Oh, Herman turns it around and a noggin knocker. Hey, he's smart because he knows that he needs to double team Ulf Herman to get him out over the top rope. Oh, Fireman's carry now. Martins, look at. Ulf Herman now as team with Martin Stone on the top rope as we go to our next entrance in. Leroy Sinke, oh. with a non-television bout, showed himself so impressively, and he won an opportunity at the Gold Rush to join his fellow security member, and he's going to take it to Ulf Herman, because once again, his job is to make sure that Herman oh, does come not on. the title shot. As, as Leroy Kincaid was throttling the throat of Ulf Herman, Martin Stone delivered a low blow, a fist to the... To the to the groin of Ulf Herman, and that will ground anyone, no matter how big you are. The you know testicles what? compounding. The Leroy Sinke, my pick to be one of the next big superstars here in the Frontier Wrestling Alliance. And when you've got a tag partner like Martin Stone, the future looks so bright 
for both of these men. Absolutely, absolutely. I've got to agree that Leroy Kincaid could perhaps be a shining light in the future of the FWA. However, the way he goes about it, totally questionable, totally unjustified, and he's taken a shortcut to the top by being a member of Alex Shane's security team. We count down again. The next entrant is... Sticks. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, the three members of Alex Shane's security team just happened to draw numbers all next to each other. I smell a rat, Nick Nolan. Hey, it was random drawings. Alex Shane does not have any influence over it. What you should be worried about is the fact that Ulf Herman is currently about to be brutalized by all three members who are currently in there of Alex Shane's security detail. They're there for one reason and one reason only, to ensure that Herman and Williams do not win this gold rush, uh, you know, battle. And what's more, if they can, then an opportunity at their own boss for the FWA heavyweight title might just be in their future. James Ty in off the ropes, trying to eliminate Avivoy. Avivoy and eliminates James Ty. He outsmarted James Ty, a measure of revenge. For Aviv Mayan. Oh yeah, but Ty's oh, no, going no, back no. in oh, there. Once. He's lost it again. He's he's lost it again. Oh Ty Titanic! He can fly, Jack. And James Ty, he might have got eliminated. It's but I think he got the last lap on this. It's the countdown again, and Aviv Mayan is out. And James Ty has uh, James Ty's lost. Johnny it. Storm! It's Johnny Storm who won the opportunity against Jack. What? Oh, James Ty! You know he hit. He hey. hit. I didn't see him. He hit the coward. Hey, you know what? I honestly believe that that's absolutely fair game. Oh, hitting Titanic. a Titanic on the oh, outside. That's fair game. This is awful. This is deplorable. This is sickening. Hey, James Ty got rid of J Johnny Storm legally by beating him in a loser must leave the FWA match. It's only now that he has to resort to this knocking is, him unconscious with awful. a steel chair. This is, this is all. He just cost Johnny Storm the opportunity to become the number one contender to Alex Shane's FWA heavyweight title. This is sickening. This is wrong. He went, to, he went through Chad Collier to get this opportunity. And what happens? A jealous, jealous James Ty takes it away from him. Sickening, Nick London. Sickening. Well, that's what you got to do to succeed in this world. you got to know who's friends to make, and you got to know whose noses you've got to crush. But anyway, Johnny Storm has just been taken to the back. We're now left with Ulf and the security detail. Let's see if any backup's coming out for Ulf. This is the music of Jack Xavier. No doubt he'd like to get his hands on Alex Shane's security, security detail. Absolutely. He's hands up. Wait a minute. Well, Wait a the music what? stopped, the so... I don't know where Xavier look is. Look at this, look at the ring. Oh, what look the hell is going on? Look at it. He's, he's pounded away on Martin Stone, Leroy Kincaid. The, the, um, the, I, I missed it. I can't believe what I, I just saw. I don't know why that happened. Oh, here we go now. Obviously, obviously Jack wasn't ready. I, I'm not quite sure what in the back, something. A technical problem, technical, maybe. Exactly. Uh, but, something up. The, the music. Still no Jack Xavier. And Sticks, and meanwhile, is trying to play peacemaker between Martin Stone and Leroy Kincaid. This is where's where's Jack Xavier now? Stick seems to have seems to have. Oh no! Let it go again! Let it go again! And oh, wait a minute! Here comes the countdown. So so what's happened to Jack Looks Xavier? Like Jack Whoa! Has Leroy Kincaid! Has Leroy been Kincaid! Eliminated. Martin Stone with a stone Leroy throw, Kincaid. so to speak. I guess Jack Xavier has forfeited his opportunity in the gold rush, and now forfeited. Oh, Something's wrong. There's no way Jack Xavier. I spoke to Jack Xavier earlier today. He was looking forward to this. Maybe he was depressed. I don't know. All depressed. I do oh, know is now. that Doug the Anarchist Williams is here, former FWA heavyweight champion. Yeah, and he's, he's taken it out on sticks. All we know is that Doug Williams is now taking it to sticks, and Old Herman, meanwhile, is being contended with Stone. Both these men, Doug Williams and Old Herman, won the title shot against Alex Shane. Doug Williams honestly believes he was robbed of the FWA title. That is arguable. Ulf Herman believes a year of his life was ruined when Alex Shane broke believes, his arm. Believes, believes, he believes correctly a year of his life was ruined as we see an innovative move from the seven-foot German Ulf Herman there dropping sticks on top of Martin Stone there. And there goes Martin Stone. Ulf Stone Herman has been eliminated. Sticks oh. has been eliminated. Kincaid and Stone Here have gone out.
and now we knew it was going to happen. We knew that Doug Williams and Ulf Herman were very likely going to go face to we face. Go. We're going to be asking you to say, instead of about your career, because that's been done before, we're going to be asking you basically, we want to get inside your mind, um, basically an insight on the business. Um, first of all, I'm not sure you really want to get inside my mind, because it's kind of a dangerous place <laughs> and you may not get out, but be that as it may, we'll continue and try anyway. Okay, thank you very much. This is big. The last the two men in the Doug gold Williams. rush. And here it is. Ulf Herman, Doug Williams fighting it out. Swinging giant at the like greatest clubs prize. from Ulf Herman. Doug Williams throws Anakis Whips Doug off Williams. the ropes. Clothesline there. Just grounding. Picks him over the seven foot shoulders. He's at a great height now. Trying to throw the Anakis Doug Williams. The elbows there. Well, oh. Doug Williams. Oh, look at the strength. He's got him in a fireman's carry. He wants to try and tip Herman over the top rope, but Herman just too big. Oh, clothesline there. Drops Doug Williams. This is just, this is just full out power, full out striking, full out attacking from both men, trying to wear the other one down to the point where they can actually pick them up and throw them out of the ring, which is what Alf Herman is now trying to do to the anarchist Doug Williams. Like I said, both men honestly believe that they want that shot at Alex Shane. Doug wants the title. Ulf Herman wants personal revenge. Who's going to get their way here? So much on the line here. Both of them aren't just fighting for an opportunity for the FWA title. Both of them are also fighting for the opportunity to get their hands on Alex Shane. Oh, Doug, oh, Doug Williams going. is going to get the elimination. Ulf Herman is going. Ulf is going. Ulf is Herm holding on for all he is. Doug has got the advantage. Wait a minute. I'm hearing. Doug, and no. there's Johnny. No. Johnny Look, Scott's he's banished. No, wait. Wait a minute. He was. Wait a minute. Well, he was. Wait, no. Elimination. Yes. Well, I suppose technically, Johnny Storm never, never made it into the ring. And therefore, never got eliminated. So therefore, Johnny Storm just eliminated both Doug Williams and Alf Herman as now the new number one contender. Johnny Storm oh. is going to New Frontiers, Nick London. He's going to take on Alex Shane for the FWA title. No one saw this coming. I don't know if I'm disgusted or highly impressed. This, is, this isn't how it was meant to end, surely. Unbelievable. And battered and injured Johnny Storm. You know what? I don't agree with a lot of things he does, but I've got to give him credit. As you can see, the bandage on the head from that vicious chair shot from the jealous James Ty earlier this evening. This is... This is amazing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're ending the gold rush. We, we thought Ulf Herman or Doug Williams were going to get a shot at our shame, but no, a new player has entered the title hunt in the form of Johnny Storm. Johnny Storm's going to get an opportunity to win the belt that has eluded him for so long. Unbelievable. It was a huggle-muggle of a match, and Johnny Storm has come up on top. The chaos we saw, including a chair, and Johnny Storm has done it. This is impressive. Ladies and gentlemen, what a way to end the competitive year. And we're going to start it just as explosively when Johnny Storm takes on the show stealer, Alex Shane. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been Nick London. And I have been Dan Reed. And I still am. And this has been Gold Rush. And that man right there is your new FWA title number one contender. See you at New Frontiers. Thank you and good night.
get too in. I'll be kicking ass. I'll steal your thunder. If you're looking for satisfaction, then watch the style in action. Cause the storm will put you in traction. After all, I'm the main attraction. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Tomorrow night at the Broxbourne Civic Hall, we'll see the Wonder Kid, Johnny Storm, go up against the FWA British Heavyweight Champion, the show's dealer Alex Shane, in their first ever singles meeting. We'll also see the Phoenix, Jody Flight, where he has that huge announcement for all of us. The Zebra Kid returns to FWA action when he takes on US strong style sensation Chris Hero. The All England champion, the South City thriller Hay Vanson, takes on the number one contender Spud. We'll see the FWA Tag Team Championships defending for the first time in 2005 as the FWA Tag Team Champions Hampton Court go up against newcomers the Manchester Massive, the team of Declan O'Connor and Joey Hayes. And let's not forget the first ever Open Door Invitational where we take 10 of the best unsigned UK wrestlers put them to a public vote where two of them will then go on and make their FWA debut that very night. We'll see a tag team grudge match when we see the team of James Ty and Mark Belton take on the Little Dragon Ross Jordan and be Miami. Well there you have it folks, for the first FWA television tapings of 2005, head down to the Broxbourne Civic Hall for FWA's New Frontiers. For more information on bell times and tickets, check out www.frontierwrestling.com. But that's not all, because in just seven days time, we will see the main event from New Frontiers, that match between the show stealer Alex Shane and the Wonder Kid Johnny Storm for the FWA British Heavyweight Championship, right here on FWA TV. Circle your calendars just seven days away. I've been Tony Giles and I'll see you there.